a Viewpoint Special Edition. In this program, Viewpoint looks at the fireboat Phoenix and its new role in the San Francisco firefighting system. Is the Phoenix still an effective firefighting tool, or is it a relic of past waterfront glory? And probably the most important question of all, is it worth the money? On July 1, 1979, the city of San Francisco put its fireboat Phoenix on a standby basis. This was an economy move made in response to the pressures of a post-Proposition 13 budget. To find out what this may mean to San Francisco, we first needed to know just what firefighting role the fireboat plays. The key to fighting any fire is quick response. When on 24-hour alert, the fire department claims the Phoenix can respond to waterfront fires quickly and has unique capabilities as a specialized firefighting tool. immediate problem is is the amount of time we do we might lose if we have to go on a standby basis you've seen us leave the docks you've seen what everyone has to do and we got away pretty quick if we have to wait for our different companies to come down it's going to be that much uh, a time loss and depending on the incident, that could be a critical thing. I'm going to swing into Pier 39. We have approximately 13 miles of waterfront to cover. And if you go in and out of the piers, you're talking about another five miles. So any loss in response time is going to be really mean meaningful. The uh, fire uh, boat Phoenix was designed and built in 1954 and she is a very capable fireboat, well designed, well maintained throughout the years and to this day very capable of doing the job for which she was designed. Uh, to begin with she can pump 9600 gallons per minute on a fire on perhaps one of these piers or on a ship in the bay or on a boat Aboard we have more than a half mile of hose to run inland. Lines can be hauled from the fireboat, carried uptown and, and played upon a fire that's on, along the waterfront. In addition to this, she has a CO2 equipment on board, which is a very efficient means of fighting a confined fire, say in a ship's hold or in an engine room perhaps on a tugboat or a small boat, an engine room fire of that type. Also, she's designed to pump into the high pressure system. There are uh, manifolds located in seven different locations along the waterfront into which the Phoenix can pump and provide water into the high pressure firefighting system. There are what the firemen call monitors, uh, the average person would consider them fire nozzles, which are stationary nozzles mounted on swivels, which you can point up or swing around onto the fires. We have also on board a, a, an under-the-pier boat, which has its own jet-propelled uh, engine, and the firefighting system in, within this little skiff that will fight the fires overhead under the piers. Fire Chief Andrew Casper is concerned over the department's ability to protect the waterfront without a fireboat on full-time ready alert. In the past, the Phoenix has been funded and operated uh, through various means. Of late, it has been a 50-50% split between uh, the Port Commission and the City and County of San Francisco, even though the Port Commission is part of the City and County. It's autonomous when it comes to port property. Uh, that occurred two years ago. 
Uh, presently, the port has picked up three quarters of the cost of the fireboat Phoenix, and we have paid for one quarter. That's the San Francisco Fire Department. But if we go back historically into the past, since the Transfer Act, uh, the Port Commission has picked up the entire cost of the Phoenix. That's for the Marine personnel, for the firefighting personnel, and also for the maintenance of the boat. After the 1st of July, we are now funding it uh, on a 50% basis paid for by the port, and the city is not contributing anything to the Phoenix. In other words, we had to take off the entire firefighting crew and put them in land-based firefighting companies because the funding is not available. A slow responding fireboat could very well not get there in time, and a fire could sweep through the entire Fisherman's Wharf area. It could affect Pier 39, even though it is completely sprinklered. We still may have to get people off the end of that pier if there is a fire in the center part of the pier. And for other areas, the fireboat has to be there very swiftly, and it will have a major effect, if such a fire occurs, on life safety as well as property damage. At the present time, we are training most of the firefighters in San Francisco in fireboat emergency operations. If we do have a pier fire or another emergency, not only a fire, some other type of emergency that requires fireboat response, we will take the nearest engine company that is in service and respond it to the Phoenix. If things are normal, the nearest company could be there within four minutes. If things are not normal, if there's a drain on our downtown firefighting units, caused by a major alarm or several other fires, we may have to bring in firefighting companies from the other side of San Francisco, or at least the center of San Francisco, which means a delay in response, which means firefighting units responding, racing to the pier, will be endangering citizens of San Francisco, pedestrians, cars, etc., as well as firefighters themselves. We try to maintain a speed that's low enough for safe response, but still in all, Percentages are there if we have to respond units too far. There's a problem there. There's also the problem of a delayed response caused by traffic congestion. The time of night is very, very important. The time of day is very, very important. We are faced with these problems. We are faced with a fireboat that may have to stand by for 10 or 15 valuable minutes before an engine company can be responded to that boat, to board that boat, and to go offshore and fight a pier fire or a ship fire. We're very concerned about the area at the base of Telegraph Hill. We've had several large pier fires there, and every time that we've had one of these piers get away from us there, embers have been thrown up in the air through thermal updraft, and these embers have moved toward Telegraph Hill against the wind because of the tremendous pressure created by the thermal updraft. If it were not for the fireboat Phoenix blocking that fire from extending to other piers, we would have had major conflagrations in that area, and no doubt it could, an, could even be worse with those large embers, burning embers, floating in the air over to Telegraph Hill, creating a much more serious problem than the one we could be facing. That's why it's essential to have a fast fireboat response. Uh, now that the fireboat Phoenix has gone on standby, uh, the professional firefighters in San Francisco, as well as other professional fire chiefs I talked to throughout the nation in port cities, uh, are very concerned about the so-called experts that have put the fireboat Phoenix on standby. It's not that a decision has been based on firefighting knowledge, firefighting strategy and techniques. The decision has been a political one on how to fund the fireboat Phoenix. Well, the board felt that it was a waste of money to have the men standing by on a boat waiting for a fire to occur. Uh, There's quite a bit of expense involved, about a half a million dollars a year. And it was concluded that if the boat were there and the maritime people were on board and the firefighters were at the nearest firehouse, they could serve a dual purpose. They could fight fires out of that firehouse and then they could also go down to the fireboat and respond uh, quickly if there was a need for them to go on the boat and man it from a firefighting standpoint. The, the fire chief says that the additional response time is critical and with the additional commercial development uh, in the uh, waterfront area, Pier 39 and expansions on Fisherman's Wharf, that, that this could be a problem. Well, I have a great deal of respect for the chief's uh, uh, ability and, and his technical expertise, and I'm not critical of that. We have to make some very difficult decisions in light of Proposition 13 and money availability. 
and it also becomes a union problem. Uh, having seven men down at the firehouse uh, learning how to be gourmet cooks uh, waiting for an occasional pier to burn, I don't think is the best uh, expenditure of very tight money that we have. And I think that response time, although it may be a little longer, uh, maybe two or three minutes longer, uh, is a better way of spending the money that we, and allotting the money we have available. We have to make those tough decisions. We had to look at all cost centers at the port and say, uh, how can we uh, save money for the port and provide the same services, not only to our uh, maritime tenants, our commercial tenants throughout the port of San Francisco. In uh, looking at the analysis, we had to look at what are the highest cost factors. One of those items was the fireboat. Um, we looked at the fireboat and we found that from 1969, when we were state agency, to, the, to that year that the fireboat cost for crew rose from $350,000 to over a million dollars. Um, as managers of the port, we had to look at that very closely and to propose some very uh, questions about the, that drastic increase. Under state law, when we were a state agency, that was the ceiling that was put on by the state legislature. The port could not support the fireboat for any more than 350000 And we had the fireboat, and we paid 350000 And indeed, it appeared at that time that the uh, fireboat was able to operate. We asked such questions as, uh, what would happen if the fireboat was put on standby basis, where the uh, crew of the fireboat, that is the marine crew, the officers of the fireboat maintained 24 hours or full-time service at the fire station, uh, which is located south of the fair building, and that the firefighters, the H2 firefighters, uh, who right now are only assigned to the fireboat, have no land side capabilities, were on standby to the fireboat by working out of houses in the proximity of the um, waterfront. When we looked at that and we came up with a, a cost analysis of that, that kind of service could have been provided for about 50% of what we're paying, or around the $550,000 level at what we're, we're funding the fireboat. Now, this was not a concept that uh, we, the staff of the port, which are not qualified people to say how a fire department should be operated, we just didn't say, well, this sounds like a neat idea, what about it? This system is employed in Oakland and employed in other port cities. So it's not unique, uh, and we weren't asking them to do something that is not done someplace else. Um, the fire chief um, had some general concerns about that, and uh, basically, because of the nature of the waterfront, uh, somehow uh, felt that that could not be um, implemented because of response time. Without an onboard firefighting crew, we will have to send the nearest engine company to go aboard the Phoenix to fight fires or to be part of the standard emergency operations. Uh, this is not the correct way of doing it. Uh, a firefighting company may not be nearby for reasons of uh, major alarms of fires or a number of fires in the downtown area that will deplete any availability of an engine company to respond to the Phoenix, which means that we may have to take an engine company from clear across San Francisco to respond to it. And there's that valuable loss in time, the loss in time that could mean a fire sweeping from one pier to another. There is not one port city, with the exception of Oakland, that has a fireboat on standby that does not have one other active fireboat. Now, the only reason for the difference in Oakland is that 95% of their piers are sprinklered. In San Francisco, we have approximately 11 piers sprinklered and 34 that are not. With increased effort being put on the commercial development of the San Francisco port, the question arises as to the effect of the fireboat standby status on waterfront development, such as Pier 39 and the rest of the San Francisco business community. Uh, what possible effect might the standby status of the Phoenix have on Pier 39? Well, I think uh, probably the most important factor is the fact that the Phoenix uh, is another uh, method of, of having adequate fire protection for the Embarcadero area for a pier complex and as such not just Pier 39 but the Pier 45 area, Fisherman's Wharf area. Um, 
There are many possibilities that could occur. This is a highly uh, congested area, both, both uh, vehicular and pedestrian traffic. And uh, to have the Phoenix being able to respond uh, uh, and having access to it uh, precludes anything happening to, say, an engine company or something that was coming down here. So I think in terms of that, we're taking a very valuable implement out of the hands of the fire department. Uh, this is a wooden complex. We've taken every precaution. We have some of the most sophisticated uh, fire prevention uh, methods intact here now. And uh, if you look at it as, as a whole, uh, San Francisco obviously has the finest fire department in the United States. And part of that was built uh, by the fact that uh, the Phoenix was an was a integral part of that. Basically, the, the value in the Phoenix would, its response time, the fact that it can get to either side of the exterior of the pier if, if we're having uh, congestion problems. Also, uh, it, if anything were to happen, say, to a couple of the other sources of water, it might take a little bit longer, not that much, but the Phoenix could already be uh, involved in the, the fire, uh, putting out a fire. Traffic congestion obviously is a significant factor along the Embarcadero and it's only added to during the tour season and with the sewer construction it's even worse. Um, the response time to the fire station, the response time and what it means with respect to uh, responding to a major fire on a pier is something that we really have to um, leave in the hands of the fire department to assess and to come up with uh, and to say this is the best way it should be done. Again, um, the fire station or the fire boat in Oakland's on standby, uh, but yet there is a different situation perhaps because the, the house is uh, closely relocated to Jack London Square. Um, on the other hand, maybe there are other possibilities. Uh, there is a fire station on 3rd Street which was uh, deactivated. Uh, the, there could be the possibility of reactivating that to develop. Maybe a, a switch of, uh, of moving some of the houses. I don't know. That's something the fire department. Uh, I guess what we're just saying is, I guess what the Board of Supervisors may be looking at too is, clearly that has to be documented and that has to be put down in a cost-benefit and analysis ratio. On Pier 39, we do have adequate fire protection. The entire pier is sprinkler and we have many fire alarm systems on that pier. It's not a problem from that standpoint. The problem exists because of the heavy traffic congestion brought about by Pier 39, by the Fisherman's Wharf area, and the Anchorage, the Canary, and Ghirardelli Square. All through the tourist season, this heavy congestion exists. Many times, our firefighting land-based equipment has been hampered in their response. So much so that on many occasions, our firefighters have been blocked off two blocks below or within the area of response. Two blocks away from a fire, a resuscitation call, or a person falling off the pier into the water. And the firefighters have had to run two blocks. Now, if we do have a fire anywhere within that particular area, we expect our land-based apparatus to be held back somewhat, if not entirely hampered. That's why it is essential to have a fireboat that can respond swiftly. And the only way we're going to have a fireboat that can respond swiftly is to have one that is not on a standby. Piers are commercial property. And a pier that burns to the waterline is at least a $2 million loss. That's not including the contents. Being commercial property, any loss over a five-year period is calculated each year in setting fire insurance premiums on commercial property in San Francisco. A major loss caused by a slow responding fireboat will definitely affect commercial fire insurance rates throughout the entire city of San Francisco. The Phoenix is 25 years old. A replacement fireboat is in the testing stage and will be built, Chief Casper says, regardless of the level of funding for fireboat services. In November of 1977, the fire department had a bond issue on the ballot that does provide for a new fireboat. It will be a fireboat that is almost entirely automated, one that will be faster, and one that will require a smaller firefighting crew. We expect that this will save the city and or the port $300,000 to $400,000 a year in salaries. Uh, this boat has gone beyond the drawing boards. It is now in the modular stage. Small models of it are being tested in the east. 
And as we move along with this, we expect the new fireboat to be in operation in about a year. We passed this bond issue to provide a more efficient fireboat and then one that is also economic from the budget standpoint. When this new fireboat is with us, a question remains. Does the Port Commission want it? We think the Port Commission does want it because we worked things out with them prior to the putting of the bond issue on the ballot. The Port Commission then was in favor of the new fireboat. At one time, the boat was, we thought about the boat as be, being designed to become totally automated so that you don't need the H2 firefighters and that it could be operated from the wheelhouse. Um, that may be able to reduce the number of H2 firefighters you need to have on a 24-hour day basis down at the, the firehouse. Um, the fireboat itself in the, is over 20 years old and we know is slow and it cannot provide the same response to pure fires as it did in the past. To that extent, uh, the city voters passed a bond issue to build a new fireboat, which will be, will, will be um, updated. It will reduce the, the, the size of the crew. It will get the, the boat to the um, fire quicker. Some of these are, the, these are the kind of concepts which we look to explore and to see what, we, what can be done to provide the fireboat service. But the new fireboat will be the city's fireboat and will not be the, will not be the responsibility of the port. Ironically, just 16 days before the Phoenix was put on standby, it was called into action to fight a night fire on Pier 45. Although Pier 45 is mostly concrete, it does have a creosoted wood skirt. It was this portion that was burning, and fire officials say that this was precisely the kind of fire that is best fought with a boat such as the Phoenix. Had the Phoenix been on standby, we would have had a more intense fire with much more smoke generated. Even though the center of that pier is on concrete pilings, the wooden stringer or the bumper along the outer part of the pier is creosote timber. Creosote soaked timber generates a lot of smoke. Uh, that smoke could very well, without the Fireboat Phoenix's fast response, could very well have gone into the restaurant area of Fisherman's Wharf and even over to the new uh, complex, the Anchorage, the Cannery, and even to Ghirardelli Square. It would have been very, very unpleasant for the people that were sitting in the restaurants. It would have done much smoke damage to the restaurants, very near to it, and it would have created an unpleasant environment for the entire area. A fire sweeping through a creosote-soaked pier uh, moves very, very swiftly, and that's why we need the Phoenix, and we used it that night because of its swift response. A slow responding fireboat uh, could mean the sweeping of a fire from the Fisherman's Wharf area or from some of the nearby piers or craft that are tied up to the pier there into the restaurant area. The Port Authority thinks that the fireboat costs too much to maintain on a ready basis. We asked Deputy Port Director Tony Tormina if, with all this new profitable commercial development going on, it wasn't in the Port's best interest to provide complete fire protection. We ensure f complete fire protection, and I think that there is no question that the fire department will continue to maintain up to top code fire protection for our waterfront. Um, that there has been never an attempt to reduce the service or i.e. the protection. What we have always been talking about is there must be ways that the same level of service can be performed at a lesser cost. Uh, that's what the whole city government's been all about in the last number of years, particularly under Proposition 13. Um, you have to look at your programs and make them cost effective. Are there ways to make the fireboat cost effective? In other words, can you provide the same amount of service um, at a lesser cost? By putting the fireboat on a standby basis, perhaps you can. It's never been proven you can. Um, the fire chief does mention the fact that there is a, a, a um, problem with response time um, and stuff like that. But, you, you know, I don't believe as a policy issue at the Board of Supervisors, that's ever been resolved. And that's really what we, where it needs to be resolved. Now, the Port, at the same time, has undertaken a significant program to reduce the fire danger at the Port itself. Again, we do this out of our operating revenues. Uh, we don't look to the city for any support. What have we done? We have updated many of our peers by fire sprinkling 
many of the piers which have never been fire sprinkled before. The fire department says that's necessary. Do it. We do it. We maintain a total fire inspection uh, bureau here at the Port of San Francisco. The fire department supplies us. We fund it. No question. We'll fund it. We'll continue to fund it. We'll even, you know, let's improve it. Um, and the fire marshal is responsible to patrol and inspect. Eventually, will the, the necessity for a full boat may be um, abolished when you have total sprinkler piers and when you have good fire detection on the piers and modern piers. For instance, when you look at the um, new piers, like Pier 94, Pier 96, uh, Pier 80, uh, those piers where you have structures, if you had a fire, the fire could be fought from the land because they're large 30-acre container facilities. You can get fire equipment onto the pier. The problem is these finger piers. We think we've heard all of the arguments. The question remains, is the fireboat really an essential life-saving firefighting tool, or is it just a colorful, expensive article of firefighting memorabilia? As is usually the case, time will tell. You've got to have the fireboat on call at all times, because speed is the big thing. When that bell hits, we have to go. And uh, if we wait for other companies to come down here once the alarm is given, we're going to lose a lot of time. And uh, that's the difference between saving a pier and losing a pier. Having seven men down at the firehouse uh, learning how to be gourmet cooks uh, waiting for an occasional pier to burn, I don't think is the best uh, expenditure of very tight money that we have. Mm -hmm.